you wanna make a cheap cow You gotta use full noodles Make it extra comfy That's the way it is This sofa has been sent to me in my DMs And I'm so thankful that you guys did Because I love it I thought it was gonna be extremely complicated And it took me a couple of months to figure it out But it turns out that it's super simple Super cheap And so much fun to make These things actually cost so much less than foam And they are very comfortable So I can't wait to start Let's start Oh sorry My name is Mikal I'm an Italian interior designer in Tel Aviv And I love to remake super high design things For a very little budget We're simply gonna start by placing some pieces of wood on the floor And marking how much we want to big and deep I want it 70 centimeters deep And I want it 1 meter 80 long And that's what I'm marking no, you do not need to use two separate pieces of wood to do this. It's just that I am so caring for the environment. Stingy. Then I'm just gonna use my spare wood. Cut away everything with your jigsaw, with your circular saw, with whatever you have at home. So let's go and mark the size of the couch and then we're gonna make the round edges. And now we're simply gonna add on the top part where it is that we want our couch to start to curve. Perfect circle! I've got the hat. This is like the easiest and smartest hack there is out there. To make a circle, you simply find the middle of your board, tie a marker to a rope, and then you use it as a perm. So simple. At that point, you can just take out your jigsaw and your half circle is gonna be perfect. Marvelous. Trace it on the other side and then jigsaw time and cut it all out. And now, as a good lazy people that we are, instead of measuring everything again, we're just gonna copy it on the second piece of wood. Trace, 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 cut, 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 and you have two identical pieces of wood. Reality check! We are gonna have to add some very long wood lines that are gonna hold the weight of your body if you wanna throw yourself on the couch. So, this is what we're using. Come check this. So basically, like this. Use this as a guideline. And that's where you know that you have to place it. We are literally gonna use the depth of our wood as a guideline, so to place it perfectly straight, mark it down and cut out the extra. Now do it four times. To be 1 trillion percent sure that nothing is gonna move in our board and in our couch, we're gonna go and put a lot of screws to place down this uh, 2 by 2 this beam, this wood, this stick, however you wanna call it. So I'm gonna make like five holes for every side. You think I'm gonna tell you to do exactly the same thing on this side? You're wrong! Precisely, on this side of the couch that will be the back side, I want you to put the sticks all the way to the back of your guideline. Same identical thing also for the back one, but at this time there is no separation, so we don't use the depth, we directly screw it all the way to the outside. And now do the same thing also with the other side. We have two of them! It works perfectly! Okay. Okay? Calm down, Michael. Now we do the height. The reason that we did this guidelines, I'm gonna show it better later, but basically it's to create a border where the legs are not going to be able to move so that it's extremely stable, it's never going to fall and it's so easy, so much easier than the videos that I saw online Cut away all the legs that you need, we're going to use 37 centimeters, that's the height of our couch and then you place them on the side you're going to go and make holes and screw them both on the right and on the left leg and then you repeat this four, five times, I don't know and then we put a central one to keep it stable Look at this! Ta -da! This thing reminds me of Noah's Ark and we're gonna make it as stable as that. We're gonna add all the screws also on the top. Hercules moment! Now let's hammer all to the bottom. Add now the security beam also on the bottom exactly as we did on the top so that these legs are never gonna move. Every single time I do one right mathematical calculation, I literally want to call my high school mathematical teacher and tell her, Girl, you are so useful. Italian geography history, still useless. Let me show you! I kept this 
same 37 centimeters of the height also for this and look at the little space that we left extra <gasps> this fits perfectly okay let's go on okay let's go on this is gonna work out <laughs> I wanted to move the table in a more visible position and I broke my table! My donkey legs of the table, so we're continuing on the floor level. <laughs> Super fasty, fast forward of my tidying up situation. And then we're gonna put a few nails to stabilize the extra piece that we did for the front. And now, ready for the part that everybody was waiting for and that's pool noodles! Let's slice them! my first attempt at cutting the pool noodle and I totally understood this was wrong. I'm gonna show you the right technique. It's more or less like my tent noodle that I understood that the technique is this. Put it inside, keep it as a knife stuck to the bottom of your noodle. First you have to do a little bit and then you drag the noodle. Once I had every single pool noodle cut in half, it was time to place it on top of my couch and start measuring how many I need, where to cut the length, and at what point I can finally curve to make the arms rest. One day later, what's up? <laughs> Mango is here to help us, and we are ready to continue with the couch. It's going to be literally the fabric that is going to hold all the noodles in place. So we put one, and we staple it. This is literally gonna be the most repetitive work you've ever done in your life. And if you think that it's repetitive watching me do this, guys, you can't imagine how much time this took. I basically spent three hours stapling the bottom, the sides, the arms. This is already looking pretty too. Now that we have a solid base and this is not moving anywhere, we're ready to do also the beginning of the front. Cut away all the extra parts and then staple it. And all this work, obviously, to find out that, again, I had done a mistake. Just started, and I already made a mess. Ugh. You want chips? Turns out that for the side, you need to use exactly the same technique that you do for the top. If you put a few of them together at the same time, it's not going to work because the fabric smunches like this. And you have no space to put your gun. In between this so top staple it side staple it finally with the right technique in my hand it was so much easier to go and staple this thing you just need to go straight and repeat it and fold it on the side we're gonna do this for all the base and then you're gonna see me changing technique once I arrive to the curvy sides of the couch after that we burned like seven trillion calories arriving with the pool noodles all the way to the side. When we rev to the curved end, no, we don't want to bend them like this. This is where the armrest is gonna go. So we're gonna cut them off from the bottom. So you see, it's easy because I am following the curve. Ba -da -ba -ba. So on the other side. Ba -da -ba -ba. Yep, yep. In this case, instead of folding under, I go and staple it on the bottom of the couch. This looks pretty great, and Mango decided that it's his personal, <laughs> that it's his bed. <laughs> okay. It's time to attach the back, but first I'm going to show you what we did till now. This is pure perfection. This is pure perfection. Disney should hire me to sing in high And I don't know why my camera decided to abandon me at this point, but I need to do the curvy sides and there's no way to do it with one piece of wood. So what I did was cutting out a lot of little sticks that I inserted on the sides. I had six per side and that's why or how or when or what I did in order to have some things to staple the pool noodles also on the curves. Once I had this, I could literally flip over the couch and it was so easy to simply staple the pool noodles also on the curvy sides. The first curvy part, I did it directly on the bottom of the couch and all the rest on the sticks that I had previously connected to. We're going to repeat the same process everywhere, basically, till the end. Staple here, staple there, staple here, st -st 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 staple here, it's staple everywhere, staple everywhere, st -st -st staple everywhere. 
Ah, okay, seriously. You need to push every single noodle all the way to the top every time you're stapling. So to make sure that there's going to be basically a crease in between the two pool noodles and that the fabric does stay stuck inside. This is literally going to be the only pool noodle that I don't cut in half. And I just made a cut in the middle that is not all the way through so that I could grab the wood in the middle and make it comfortable so that you do not feel the wood on your back or on the arm when you put your weight on top of it. Once you arrive to the last one, you are not going to be able to staple this one because there's no space left to pass your staple gun inside. So what I literally did with the fabric was pushing it inside with my hands and only in the curves of the pool noodles is where I could pass my stapler so that I could keep it attached. Okay, 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 guys, the couch is done. It's just behind me and I can't wait to show it to you. But before we do that, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done it yet. And see you next Monday.